Good evening, my name is Zan Hess. I serve as the principal here at Conestoga Middle School and um, welcome to this middle school listening session as we're working through and presenting some proposed schedules for the coming school year for middle schools themselves. Um, for those of you who are watching live, we're glad that you're with us. Uh, if you have any questions throughout this process or after you watch the video, please feel free to communicate with the middle school principal or communicate with the district office and we will do our best to find the answers that you, that you are looking for. Um, at the conclusion of this uh, presentation, I'm going to give you an opportunity to have access to a survey that I would invite you to participate in and provide your feedback. Uh, the key to that is, is that you're going to get a lot of information tonight. Please don't respond tonight. It'll be open for a couple of weeks. Think on it. Ask additional questions so whatever feedback you provide is really what you want to say rather than multiple messages that can sometimes confuse the system. Okay, so my job tonight is to present to you sort of the background of what got us here historically and then talk about the four proposed schedules that are in front of us and as a district. I will let you know that the ultimate decision maker in this process is actually Don Grotting, who is our superintendent. He's taken that upon himself. So every, fee every bit of feedback that we provide to him um, will be reviewed for sure and that will help guide his ultimate decision as that's his responsibility to make that decision for us. Um, What's sort of guiding us today in our work is this concept of that we believe that all of our students, regardless of their home address, economic status, home language, initial proficiency levels, or other discriminating factors should have the same opportunities as their peers across their system or our system. Right now we have eight middle schools that have some pretty distinct differences in what's offered as the length of courses and how those function amongst themselves. So one of the things that we're working on is trying to create a system that is more consistent so that every student in every middle school has the same kind of experience and same kinds of opportunities. All focused on the concept of equity for them. So from a backward pers background perspective, uh, in 2014-15, a large group of parents, administrators, uh, special interest groups to a certain degree, different opinions about that. And as they finished that work, they realized that what they were essentially looking to create was a middle school that couldn't exist with current resources and time. We would have needed to add multiple hours to a school day to make all of that work. Um, part of that exercise was to make that information available to everyone, but most importantly, it was to help sort of begin that work. Once we can created that list of expectations or hopes or dreams from that community work group, the middle school administrators for the last number of years have been working on ideas and solutions that could help meet some of those uh, goals and hopes and dreams. Some of the challenges ultimately landed in the financial side of things. Uh, it's expensive to create and put together systems that would meet a lot of those dreams and aspirations. Um, <clears throat> the nice thing is, is this, this last year we develop, or we've been developing the concept of middle school philosophy starting with we believe that there should be teaming opportunities in middle school for certain small groups of teachers serving a specific group of students as opposed to a giant community where students are not as well known as they should be and could be. Um, secondly, uh, we believe that instruction should be in humanities, science and math should be longer. The curriculum and the ideas that are needed to per teach those, uh, those concepts require more time during the school day. Uh, next, we wanted to put together some specific ideas of electives and, on, and offerings. First and foremost, that PE and education and health is required, that there's a world language at every middle school, and that language that we chose was Spanish. Uh, fine arts would consist of visual arts, band, choir, and drama, that a technology class is available and for students to take. And last but not least, for those students who need a little extra help and interventions and, re and support, that we would for sure have resource room classes, English language learning classes, AVID classrooms, and intervention courses that are available to students who are struggling in both reading and math. So there was a process that sort of started with our board, actually, that gave a charge to our superintendent to prepare a recommendation for common middle school course offerings and a common middle school schedule to be implemented next fall in this year 2021, uh, 2020 and 2021. Um, 
So Dep Deputy Superintendent Hansman convened a group of people, middle school administrators for sure, uh, leaders from teaching and learning, a business office to help us figure out the costs of certain proposals that might come forward, as well as human resources take a look at how licensure might work and how those moving of teachers that may be required would happen. Uh, they connected, collected a whole bunch of additional research by looking at schedules all over the place. They gathered uh, specifically school board objectives and they created some specific scheduling objectives for this group to make sure that we were meeting those needs. And then they proposed schedules that were analyzed using those objectives. I'll share with you what those objectives are because you might be interested. First and foremost, the school board said we need to have a common middle school experience for middle schoolers, not eight distinct ske schedules and experiences. The classes need to be appropriately length. We need to meet the PE requirements that are mandated through state law. Student choice needs to consist of two electives in addition to PE. Currently, most schedules have a PE class and a elective class, so they're looking to enhance the elective offerings in this, in this model. That one of those quality electives at least meets once daily as opposed to alternating days and that that course be a year long in length and that there is opportunities for students who are dual identified. For example, we have students who are both special education and ESL students. They have to receive their courses by law, but when that happens in current schedules, they're excluded from elective offerings. So the goal is, is to have those dual identified students have an opportunity to also access some of our elective offerings in our classes here at school. Board objective number one, to perhaps provide a little bit more detail, uh, the length of periods should be consistent from campus to campus. Right now they're not. Uh, the length of periods might vary by subject. Math, for example, might need more time than perhaps a PE class, for example. Uh, student choice needs to be part of the courses that student takes. In some middle schools, student choice is not really available to them. Uh, the menu of courses should be consistent from school to school. Right now they are not. Some schools have drama, some schools have band, some schools have choir, but not necessarily all of them. Intervention classes similarly, schools have made different decisions. So the goal is ultimately to make sure that all of those offerings are consistent from school one to school two to three, etc. School board scheduling objectives. Number one, we need to have classes that are appropriately length. They couldn't, shouldn't be too long nor too short. Certain adopted curriculum suggest and demand that a certain amount of time is required to properly present the material that's there. And, and we shouldn't short that nor make it too long. And ultimately, teachers, of course, should receive professional development to support strategies to engage students at all times. Our PE requirements are interesting. Uh, there is Senate Bill 4, was just changed recently, but ultimately requires us by the year 2023, there on the bottom, if you can see, that all middle school students should have 225 minutes of PE per week. That's essentially 45 minutes per day, is what that law asks of us. Um, in addition to PE, there should be a consistent electives, if I, as I've stated, and students should be able to choose two electives in addition to PE as a part of their day. With the electives meeting at least once daily, some of those options must include world language, theater, visual arts, band, choir, and technology. Um, and all students should have the opportunity to access those, that daily course. From a dual identified student perspective, ultimately they want to make sure that students can choose in addition to receiving PE, or sorry, in addition to receiving special ed services and multilingual services, they should ultimately be able to choose those electives themselves. As middle school administrators, we also created some priorities that we wanted to make sure were embedded in that. First and foremost, that in we, when we focus on our literacy concepts of reading and writing, we need to have at least 85 minutes per day embedded in our, in our student schedule to meet the, the expectations in our adopted curriculum. From a mathematics perspective, our adopted curriculum requires at least 60 minutes per day of mathematics instruction. We are too committed to the concept of a common experience for all students and we need to allow students to have choice and access and not exclude them because of certain needs that they might have within their lives and within their need learning needs. And most importantly, we want to make sure that there's interventions that are there to support students. Um, we have a number of students who come with us with diminished needs or capacity in, in ways of, of learning and they need some extra help. Currently, that's not available in all schools to provide that additional support as we go along. And last but not least, that teaming is absolutely essential in our mind. Um, there are middle schools, junior high, when I was in junior high, 
I went from one course to another and it was more driven by departments. I think most of us probably experienced that similar kind of concept. For us, we want to make sure there is a core group of teachers that are working with a specific group of students to enhance that communication and collaboration and support ultimately for our kids as they move through our system. <coughs> In this idea, we're looking to have three to four teachers who share about 90 kids. That's sort of the ideal that we've created. Our core instruction, as I've indicated, is humanities, math, and science. That's driven primarily through state testing, is what those, those courses are tested, and we need to make sure that we provide enough support for our students to not necessarily be ready for the tests alone, but for the concepts and materials that are going to be necessary as they move through the high school system and on to college, ultimately. Our elective courses, again, PE, world language, fine arts, technology, and the interventions. Now this is where the, I guess the work comes in, is that you're going to receive in just a moment a packet of paper uh, of, the, of the four different schedules. I'm going to try to explain them to you as best I can. Uh, and my job is not necessarily to advocate for any or all of them, but more just provide the facts of what they are. Um, so we'll pass those out real quick and then we'll go through those. I would ask that if you have any questions, just raise your hand since it's being recorded. What I'll need to do is restate your question and then try to answer it as best I can. If you have questions in regards to resources and how this would be accomplished from a financial perspective, that is still to be determined in certain levels because that hasn't been worked through specifically. Schedule A is probably the most similar to many of our middle schools. That essentially has three core courses of humanities, science, and math. And then at the end, and those are 70 minutes long each. And then at the, uh, the elective side, there'll always be PE and two electives for the students themselves. All of these classes, the humanities, science, and math would be daily. PE and health would be daily. That single elective, their fifth period, would be daily. And then there would be an, potentially an alternating kind of day on that sixth period. Again, that has to be determined as we build our schedules. But that's what uh, Schedule A looks like. Does that make sense? Any questions? Can you explain the core plus again? Yeah, the, alternating or? the core plus, as I understand it, is a course that would be taught by, for example, a core teacher. So they would get their students back and they would provide some services. So on a core, they would have a core plus on one day and then on another day, for example, a B day, they might have uh, another elective, but it would be an alternating day kind of thing. That's how I understand it to function. Any other questions about that? Yes, please. But are, so you're not necessarily saying they're going to have like all their core courses in the morning? Right? No, no, this is just an example. So the question was, is are, the core, are all the classes going to be like that? It, we would not be able to have all 1,000 of our students going to electives at the same time. Um, so this is the format of it. Students may have those three core classes at the end of the day or in the middle of the day or at the beginning. And it would uh, depend on how we built that schedule. Yes, please. Does that mean that there are a lot of bells throughout the day and sometimes the bell is not for you because there's some 70 minute classes? Right. Sure. The question is, is, will there be multiple bells that perhaps might ding in the middle of another class because kids are moving at different times? Um, I would anticipate there might be some bells, but when we build our schedule during that midday when there's lunches that are happening, we actually choose to turn those bells off and they, they just don't occur. Um, but there would be certainly bells dinging at different times during the day for sure. Any other questions about Schedule A? Okay. Moving on to schedule, schedule B, uh, it's essentially it's a seven period day um, with the idea that if you recall humanities was a really important idea. You can see here periods one and two has humanities linked together in almost a block. So a student would have two periods of humanities to make sure you get in all of the reading and writing that needs to occur in that space. And then the balance of the classes would be 48 minutes every day. Does that make sense? Pretty clear. Um, classes in this case are all 48 minutes, the exact same for every class and every course. Um, and yeah, there would still be bells dinging at different times, <laughs> for sure as lunches sort of mess things up a little bit. Any questions about this schedule? This one seemed pretty straightforward to me. Yes, please. Um, my, my wondering is about the objectives that you mentioned earlier. Uh -huh.
Right. So what what this gentleman asked is, is the objectives from the board and others suggest that the math and science, we aren't able to get to that 60 minutes that would be required or encouraged. You're right. We meet the humanities concept in this model because they're joined together and there's more than 85 minutes for that. But you're absolutely right. Uh, we do meet the PE and health requirements on this one because it's 45 minutes a day. But you're right. From the science and math perspective, we don't hit that mark on this schedule. Other questions? Okay. Oh, yes, please. Well, I am just wondering, would this be allowed? So I know here at Conestoga, we have humanities kind of already split into uh -huh. humanities and then writing. Right. And other middle schools have it in a bigger block. That's correct. Like humanities includes social studies, reading, and writing. Correct. Does this schedule give the schools? kind of that opportunity to keep it like all one teacher teaching it? Like would it be blocked? Like, does that make sense? It does. I don't know how I'm gonna be able to repeat that for those listening, but the question was, then that's okay. Uh, the question was is that current, some schools have humanities and writing separated in that block, first and second period. Um, and can that still be afforded? I, that's actually a question that our superintendent is asking our teachers, would they prefer to keep them together in a block? Um, or would they rather those concepts and courses be separated? And I don't know the results of that. That survey actually concludes, I believe, this week. So I'm not sure. But um, at this point in time, it would be humanities as written, as a block, um, with the possibility of superintendent's decision to separate those if he chose to do that. And I don't know what he's leaning at this point in time. Any other questions about Schedule B? Okay. Schedule C is a little tricky. And I'm going to do my best to explain it. Um, in Schedule C, students have seven total courses. As you can see, and I've sort of split this out a little bit to make it a little bit easier to see. In day one, you'll see that there's actually only six courses afforded to that child. Um, and if, you'll, if you're counting and doing the checking, you're probably wondering, where is elective two? Because it's not there. If we have the three content areas, PE and elective, and there should be one more elective. In this particular model, um, this is called in some other vernacular a drop schedule. In this model, elective two, you'll see here, comes in on day two and occupies the space of that first humanities class. And as it goes through the system on day three, the elective two goes and occupies the space of that second elective. And on the fourth day, it would occupy the space of the science course. So over a period of seven days, a, t a student would have six of those classes, six, uh, all of the classes six times, if that makes sense. I don't think I said that clearly. But in short, every, every day a different course drops off and it just sort of cycles around. I think it might be similar to what elementaries do with their PE, music, and technology kind of rotation. In this case, it would be all courses going through. In this case, all of the courses are exactly the same, 57 minutes each, so we almost meet that math objective um, for six days, but on one day of that six-day rotation, seven-day rotation, a student would not have math. Same would be for all of the other courses as well. Any questions about that one? Confusing, Confusing for the kids? Um, I think on, at first glance, probably so. I would anticipate that they would be able to figure it out over time. It might be harder for the adults in the system to figure it out than the kids in the end. Any other questions about that? Okay. Option D or schedule option D is an, actually an eight period day. You'll notice that the, the class periods are 42 minutes, so it sort of has some struggles with the math and science, but they came up with a solution for that. Um, students would always have on an A day two humanities courses, so that's very close to the 85 minutes that we need to work towards. And in this model, on A day they would have two science classes and a math, and then the, elect the requisite electives underneath. On a B day, it switches to where math then is two periods long and science is a single period. So you're sort of rotating two, one, two, one, and bouncing back and forth depending on the A day and B day. The math courses and the science courses would be taught by the same teacher, so I would see a science teacher, the same teacher for two periods, and then on the next day I would see the same math teacher for two periods, and on opposite days I do science or math on a single with the same teacher again. 
Hope that makes sense. Any questions about that one? So that one just doesn't meet the PE? Uh, yeah, we would certainly not hit the PE mark on that, for sure, even though those are daily. Uh, math and science, I think we probably would if we averaged all of that together. Questions about that one? Things you're looking at wondering. Okay. You're scratching your head. You're okay? Mm -hmm. All right, good. Fair enough. Um, those are the things that I needed to present to you. Um, in a moment, I'll give you some information about the survey. So just so you know, uh, for those of you watching this video, if you'd like to respond to the survey, there is a QR code that I believe will be posted on our website. Is that correct? I'm looking back at you, um, that will allow folks to uh, respond to this survey and provide their feedback. It will be open until February 19th, so you've got a couple of weeks. So again, please don't answer tonight. Spend some time reflecting, talking about it, thinking about how that might work for you. Even talk to your kids. They might have some thoughts and ideas on what they think would work best for them. And then ultimately provide that information through that survey. I am confident to know that Mr. Grotting will be looking at all of these comments and considering each and every comment to make sure he's doing what he believes through your feedback, what is best for our system. Um, and in the end, that'll be an opportunity for you to use this QR code if you wish, or just use the one that's on your handout. It's the same. Any other questions? Yes, have Please. Time. With any of these schedules, the time that the bell rings at the morning at the end, so the, the time that the school starts. 9.15, yeah. And will be the same? Uh, it, I have not heard if they would change the schedule, but the, all of these schedules afford the same now. So 9.15 for, till 3.50, um, as far as I know, would remain the same um, that amount of time. Could they change the schedules themselves? I don't know. No. All of them, yeah, all of them accomplish the same amount of time during the day. Yeah, thank you for asking. Um, in those schedules, of course, there are different numbers of, of passing times that are worth considering. Uh, some have more passing time than others, and as you introduce more passing time, that's ultimately less time in the classroom. So those are things to think about uh, as, you're, as you're considering options for sure. Other things that you might be wondering about. Yes, please. Is uh, the SUMA program going to be impacted at all with the common? Yeah, the, the question is about the SUMA program and how it might be impacted with this schedule, I honestly don't know. Just in general? Just in general, I don't think so. I think it'll function probably the same. I know there's been some discussions about uh, moving some and closing some, if you will, and consolidating because of the less students in SUMA, but I don't think it'll impact ultimately the schedule or how they function it either. At least that's what, I've un that's what I understand to be true. Questions that, yes, please. A. Let me go back to it. Yeah, option A. Please. Had that six period core plus core an extension. extension. Yeah. So that could be an alternating right. extra. Yeah, classes, so it, the way I'm. Extra instruction. Right. What that six period would look, as I understand it, is, is on an A day, for example, those students would be with their core teachers doing some specific activities related to their learning, and on the opposite day, they would be spending time in an encore course of their choice of the things that we listed. And they, so that's, that's how I understand it to be at this point. The core teacher might be a science teacher, so they would be getting that core extension from a science teacher, not True. from a humanities teacher or a math teacher. That's true. So that when you're talking core, that's, that would be all of the core teachers, humanities, science, and math. But the nice thing is, is they're all teaching together. So those students could move um, between and amongst those teachers throughout the, that period or throughout the year with yeah, different areas of focus. Could alternate exactly. Like that, that time frame could be right. used today for humanities or tomorrow. Exactly. So there could, and how that time and space would be used would be something that we would need to develop. Um, in the years past, we've had a number of different uh, courses that are similar to that, so we could go back to the well and sort of see what kinds of things worked well for our students. Um, or we might be able to find some new ideas on how to do that. Um, but it's an, it's an interesting opportunity for sure. Other questions that you're wondering about? Okay. 
So um, for those of you watching the video, thank you for your time. Again, if you have any questions, please communicate with the middle school principal or you can call the district office. You can also visit our website to find additional information about how things are proceeding in regards to this particular activity. Thank you for your time.